My name is Ty Campana. I'm Katie Hustleby. I'm Haley Buchanan. I'm Nico Lajat. Steven Jardina. Val Mamish. Carl Fusco. In 2016, seven Waltham High School students explored places throughout New England that have been said to be haunted. They investigated and filmed the unknown in hopes of learning the truth behind the infamous rumors. Do you believe in the paranormal? It was built in 1848 and originally called the Massachusetts School for the Feeble Mind. Allegations of sexual abuse, forced electroconvulsive therapy, solitary confinement, and threats of lobotomy have all been brought against that institution. Some boys were encouraged to join a special science club. Club members were promised more food than usual, parties, and even trips to see the Boston Red Sox play at Fenway Park. The uh, nation was shocked to learn that the federal government sponsored radiation experiments on human subjects without their consent. The experiments were conducted on the 57 members of the club. Though the parents were informed that an experiment involving nutrition would be performed, they were not told that the experiment would involve spiking the children's cereal. When we went to the Fernald, me and Ty decided to stay in the car just to watch the car to see if anyone was like gonna come. And then Katie, Nico, and Haley decided to go in the building just to get some footage and be able to put in the video. And so we were waiting in the car, everything was off, it was completely silent, we were just on our phones, and we heard footsteps. So we turn around to, because we thought it was um, Nico, Katie, and Haley coming back to the car, and no one was there. And then we both looked at each other because nothing was there. And so we both like, like looked at each other like, what, what's going on, did you hear that? And then right when Ty asked me if I heard that, the footsteps kept getting faster and closer, like someone was running towards the car. And you could distinctly hear it because it was on the gravel. And so once like we started like freaking out, like, oh my God, like something is here with us, it started circling around the car, running around the car. So then Ty locked the door just because it's just an instinct to lock the door, something's out there. And so like it kept running and running and then it stopped and then the car unlocked by itself. So we called Katie, Haley, and Nico to come outside and the noises stopped. So after we left um, the first building, we went to another building and then um, like same thing happened. We stayed in the car and then we started recording because we like we wanted like footage of like what's going on in the car, like proof that it is happening. And we were sitting there and all of a sudden we heard tapping on my window like someone was like trying to get our attention to like unlock the door or something. So Kara heard it on one side, I heard it on the other side. And um, we both heard it, we looked at each other, we were asking like what that noise was, and it happened again. Calling Haley reversed hand with middle finger extended, and making the sign of the horns. No. So we're like, nope, this already happened before, like, like we know this is real. So then we called Haley, told her get to get out. Get out now, now. And then that's when we left the Fernald. In the mid 20th century, the Fernald School in Massachusetts performed medical experiments on children involving nuclear radiation. Neither the children nor parents were informed that researchers were quietly slipping radioactive material into the breakfast and milk of children under the care of the Fernald School. So the second day that we were at the Fernald, it was really creepy, like a lot of things were happening with Kara and Ty. Um, but when we were filming inside, we were getting like these creepy vibes, so we started driving around to see what else we could film. And there was this really creepy gazebo. And, you know, obviously if it looks creepy, why not film it? So I'm the only one that gets out of the car. And I'm going up to the gazebo and I'm starting to film and there's this like little tree next to it. So I was like, oh, this probably was a really cute place for kids to play when they were younger, like when they were still, you know, there. So I get up close to the gazebo and I feel like there's someone watching me or it feels like there's a presence behind me. And at first I ignored it because I probably thought I was paranoid, not really sure. And so I was getting closer to the tree and the closer I got to the tree, the more I felt like there was something there. You know how you can hear like when someone steps on the grass, I could hear someone walking behind me. So I kept turning around and I kept seeing if there was anything there. And eventually I got so creeped out because I was going in between the gazebo and the tree 
and it was like someone was walking around the tree as I was like starting to go towards the entrance of the gazebo. And that was like, that was it for me, considering I was out there by myself and I was like freaked out. I didn't want to be there anymore, so I just ran back to the car. But honestly, like, that gazebo was not happening. The Metropolitan State Hospital was an American hospital for the mentally ill, located on grounds that extended across parts of Waltham, Lexington, and Belmont, Massachusetts. In 1978, a patient named Melvin Wilson murdered co-patient Anne-Marie Davy, dismembered her body, and buried her in several shallow graves in the grounds of Med State. Before the hospital closed, some dealt nightly with shadowy figures moving in and out of ropes and locked doors opening and slamming and closed. For a while, electroshock treatment was used in the hospital. Years later, workers reported still hearing screams and seeing flashing lights from those areas. Activity was also reported in a series of tunnels underneath the grounds, used by the workers to travel to different parts of the campus. Their passages were lit by a single light bulb yards apart, and it was common for the workers to feel unseen hands grab at their feet or touch their faces as they walked into the darkness. <laughs>